Ecosystem services, ESS, are rapidly becoming an important tool and consideration in rural land management. This video introduces one example of an ecosystem service, the rewetting of Exmoor's peatland for water storage and carbon capture. These slides were originally presented at the English Upland Peatland Networks Conference in Devon in November 2012. My name is Charles Carrap and I have been working with the team for Southwest Water to develop some practical proposals for this ecosystem services scheme. Let's set the scene by looking at how drinking water is collected from the River X. Let's start by locating Exmoor itself. Here it is, shown as a small blue oblong shape to the left of our picture here. Now we'll have a look at the river system as it drains away from Exmoor itself. What we have here is the river bar which rises in Exmoor and then drains from west eastward uh, towards the River X itself, joining it just above X Bridge. But before we get to X Bridge, let's look, have a look at the river system to the east of the River X because that's also going to be important to our story. But before then, here's a, a little picture just to show us what the river bar looks like in its upper reaches as it gathers momentum through Exmoor there. Returning to the east of the X, we can see here the River Hadio, which has been impounded by the Wimbleball Reservoir. Uh, that's an important balance in the water supply for the southwest. Now we're going to locate the uh, crossing point of Exbridge itself, and in particular the pumping station there, from which southwest water extracts drinking water from the region. Now, there's a problem with the river flow in the River X, which is that uh, when the river is at full spate, there's plenty of water to use. However, uh, when levels in the river fall, uh, there's not enough water for extraction purposes, and it's at this point that water is released from the Wimbledon Reservoir to run down the River Hadio and to supplement the natural flow in the river. This means that the Wimbledon Reservoir is really acting as a balancing reservoir and therefore needs to be replenished. Here's problem number one. The Wimbledon Reservoir has a relatively small catchment area and it's therefore necessary to pump water back up to it at times of peak flow in the River X so that the reservoir is ready again for when flow levels drop again. This is by no means a cheap task because the water has to be pumped about five miles across country and it has to be lifted a total of about 120 uh, metres in order to get up to the height of the reservoir's lip, which is at 240 metres above Ordnance Datum. The thinking behind, therefore, our ecosystem service scheme in Exmoor is that if the peat of Exmoor were to be put into good condition, it may act more effectively as a sponge, holding back water in times of heavy rainfall and releasing it more gradually in periods of low rainfall and thus reducing reliance on the balancing supplies from the reservoir itself, saving, therefore, pumping costs. And there's a further benefit here because the restoration of peat is believed to be one of the best natural ways to extract carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Uh, already estimates suggest that an awful lot of carbon is locked up in existing peat reserves and naturally this will be released as peat is eroded or is dug out. But the restoration of peat offers excellent opportunities to soak some of that carbon back up again and lock it up in the ground for generations to come. Two very attractive examples then and uh, these are both examples of nature working for us in helping us to manage our water supply and also in protecting us from excessive uh, build-up of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, uh, further exacerbating problems of global warming. We'll go on now to look at some pictures of Exmoor and uh, some related picatives. Here we have a typical view across peatland on Exmoor, and you can see in this picture some small undulations, and uh, at least some of these will be remnants of former moorland grips 
very shallow, uh, narrow profile ditches dug through the peat over the years to help drain the water away from it. We can see some more of these next picture as well. We can see here a couple of colleagues from the team uh, walking across the peat in the middle ground. And here you can see some very distinctive uh, remains of moorland gripping here. Um, and uh, very shallow ditches indeed which um, have started to, to refill on this particular area, but we'll see some more examples of that again in a moment. This picture is actually not from Exmoor at all, but it's been taken from the edge of Kinder Scout in the Peak District. And this shows some very badly eroded peat. We can see what would have been the original surface of the peat here, and how uh, scouring water running off the area has eroded away through to the base rock. You can see little pieces of rock and so on around here, releasing all the carbon that was locked up in that peat, and of course meaning that water will be running off this part of Kingdom Scout much more rapidly, especially during periods of very heavy rain. Here is the start of peatland erosion on this picture, and we can see that the surface has been broken up, um, that water will start to form its own little channels, and that will lead to further erosion. But it is possible to undertake some fairly simple works to uh, prevent this further erosion and to restore the peatland to good water holding condition. This picture is of an area on Dartmoor, by the way. Here we can see some of the sort of work that has been undertaken on Dartmoor and uh, the two ladies you can see standing there on the intersection of uh, various areas where little peat buns have been uh, dug out of the surrounding area of peat and used to form uh, little dams to stop this area becoming as eroded as the area you can see behind it by holding up the water. This in turn allows the mosses and the sphagnums and so on to develop in the little pools that have been created um, and uh, rebuild in a very slow way the peat that is in danger of being lost. Our last picture here actually shows a little cross section of the vegetation regrowing itself. Here we can see the new top growth. We might expect there to be about 10 centimetres or so of that growing in a typical year. Here we can see the more matted, older undergrowth, and about 10 centimetres of top growth will become about one centimetre of that uh, tangled mat underneath. That one centimetre will in turn become about one millimetre of peat. So we've got a very straight ratio here of 10 to 10 to 10. About 10 centimetres of top growth in one year will become about one millimetre of peat in the future. So we can see that it takes a long time to create a decent layer of peat. Typical thicknesses on Exmoor, for example, are about half a metre. So that's probably at least 500 years work to have created that peat in the first place. Here we're back on Exmoor here we can see some of the more typical work which is undertaken to restore the condition of the peat in Exmoor. This little dam here will have been created by a combination of uh, wooden planks used to create a very simple dam, uh, backed up by either bales uh, of material collected from the moor itself or indeed uh, clumps of peat dug out from elsewhere to reinforce the wooden barrier. And again, we can see here a fairly still pool has been created, which can then be recolonized by vegetation to lay down the peak deposits of the future. If we go on here, we can see a typical cross section. Uh, here is the surface, uh, surface development here, uh, going down through the ground to show the gradual process of peat formation below ground. As I mentioned, it takes uh, the typical depths of peat across a lot of Exmoor are about half a metre, so that's quite a shallow area, uh, really. So that has set some of the background to the Exmoor work. Now let's have a closer look at some of the economic aspects of our ecosystem service approach. In this diagram, I'm going to set out, first of all, just uh, what the benefit of using the peat in Exmoor for water storage purposes is. And first, we can see that there is the potential from our earlier di diagram to save pumping costs replenishing the Wimbledon Reservoir. 
However, if we project that further into the future, increasing demand for water may well mean that there could be future requirements to, um, to extend the treatment costs of the water. For instance, it's not so much of a problem from Exmoor, but certainly from other moorland areas, if the peat is eroding badly, material will be swept out with it, the water itself will be discoloured, and this will add to the uh, treatment costs for a water company in removing both the discoloration and the material from the water before it's piped out to consumers. In the longer term, we can also see that future water requirements may, uh, may add to future costs for both the storage of water and its abstraction as well. These, therefore, are all potential cost savings of one sort or another to southwest water. How will these cost savings be used then? It seems not unreasonable at all that if the cooperation of landowners, farmers, other land managers, land occupiers is to be required um, in restoring peat to good condition, that at least some of these savings must therefore be part of uh, a deal with those farmers to pay them for what they are providing by way of this ecosystem service to Southwest Water and ultimately to its water consumers and shareholders. However, those water consumers as well may expect to see some of the savings by these uh, natural ways of managing water passed on to them as well. So some of the savings will go in that way. And of course, Southwest Water, like any other commercial company, has shareholders too, and they will rightly expect to see some of the money either held back within the company for future reinvestment or indeed for distribution in the form of dividends on their shares. So that's where the money's coming from, and that's where we can expect the money to go to. In addition to that, we mentioned the uh, possible carbon benefits, and it may be that Southwest Water is in a position to uh, buy some of that carbon for its own requirements, or perhaps to uh, broker deals with other potential purchases of that carbon as well. In addition, there could well be other uh, payments for other aspects of ecosystem services, perhaps linked to the carbon element, for example, biodiversity recreation, or other examples of ecosystem services. This has very important links to some current policy thinking uh, at high levels within our government and elsewhere. For example, the Natural Environment White Paper of 2011 placed great emphasis on the development of payment schemes for ecosystem services, PEZ, or Payments for Ecosystem Services. Uh, this has been accompanied by the National Ecosystem Assessment and the National Ecosystem Assessment Follow-on Project, and a number of pilot projects are now getting underway in different parts of the country looking at similar schemes to this one. We've also seen the formation of the National Capital Committee to advise government itself at the highest levels in the form of the Treasury um, as to how the value of nature should be reflected in our national balance sheet. In presenting this video, I've really just used the background uh, to one particular scheme, and I hope that's been a helpful introduction to the work that we have been doing in the Southwest. I must stress, however, that it is only one example of a much wider series of initiatives which are taking many different shapes in different parts of the country. In part two of the video, I'll go on to look at some of the initial concerns that the farmers of Exmoor raised when we met them in November uh, 2011. Key questions if programmes like this are to develop successfully in the future. My name is Charles Cow, and my contact details are on the screen if you would like to know more about the work we're doing. Thank you.